This video features the installation of our spring-centered street kit with our streetlight flywheel. However, kits are available in different configurations based on the flywheel being used, the torque being produced at the crankshaft, and your style of driving. We will be installing a new ACT Performance Street Clutch Kit and Streetlight Flywheel. While this video provides the basics on how to switch out a clutch, it is in no way intended to replace a factory service manual. The installation procedure will be the same except for the flywheel and disc being used. Our kit lineup for this application is as follows. AA2 HDSD Solid Centered Street Kit AA2 HDSS Spring Centered Street Kit AA2 HDG6 Six Pad Spring Centered Race Kit AA2 HDR6 Six Pad Solid Centered Race Kit Disconnect the cable from the negative terminal of the battery and move it away to assure it will not make accidental contact. Unfasten and remove the splash guard. Unbolt the front exhaust flange on the driver's side of the vehicle. If there are any brackets securing the exhaust to the transmission, unbolt and remove them. On the passenger side, remove the hardware fastening the bracket to the front pipe. Then unbolt and remove the bracket assembly from the transmission. Unbolt the exhaust flange. At the center of the vehicle, unbolt and remove the tunnel brace. At the upper rear passenger side of the transmission, unplug all the connections for the oxygen sensors and remove the connectors from the bracket. Remove the exhaust hangers from the rubber isolators and then remove the exhaust system from the vehicle. Unfasten the drive shaft center bearing and unfasten and remove the heat shield over the drive shaft. At the rear of the transmission, unbolt and remove the heat shield for the drive shaft. Unbolt the front drive shaft flange. Unbolt the rear drive shaft flange. Before removing the drive shaft, make sure to mark the drive shaft and the flanges at both front and rear to allow for reassembly in the same position. Remove the drive shaft from the vehicle. On the passenger side of the vehicle, unbolt and remove the axle shaft heat shield. Unbolt and remove the axle shaft heat shield on the driver's side. On the driver's side of the vehicle, unbolt the axle shaft from the transmission flange.
on the passenger side of the vehicle unbolt the axle shaft from the transmission flange. Move both axles away from the transmission and secure them with a nylon cable tie or something similar. Unfasten and remove the splash guard bracket. Place a jack under the transmission. Unbolt the crossmember from the vehicle body. Unfasten and remove the center and rear tunnel heat shields. Unbolt the sway bar and move it down to allow better access to the lower bell housing bolts. You may have to loosen some various lines and brackets to also allow for access to the lower bell housing bolts. Loosen the engine mounts. Unfasten and remove the three lower bell housing bolts facing toward the engine. Lower the transmission just a few inches to allow better access to the upper bell housing bolts as well as the shift linkage and push rod. Unfasten and remove the remaining bell housing bolts. On the top right of the transmission, unbolt the shifter connecting rod and push rod. On the top left of the transmission, unbolt and disengage the shifter selector lever from the transmission. And unbolt and remove the slave cylinder from the bell housing. Do not open the hydraulic system. Toward the top left of the bell housing, disconnect the electrical plug and then unfasten and remove the crank position sensor and its heat shield. Making sure the wiring harness is free from the transmission, disengage the transmission from the engine and then carefully lower it and remove it from under the vehicle. On this vehicle, we will be installing our spring-centered street kit and our street light flywheel. Remove the shift fork and bearing assembly from the transmission, then remove the bearing from the shift fork. Clean the guide tube, pivot, and input shaft splines. Lightly coat the guide tube and input shaft splines with the purple ceram lube included with your kit. Slide the disc onto the input shaft to work the lube into the splines. Remove the disc and wipe off any excess lube to prevent contamination of your new clutch. Also, place a small amount of lube on the fork and slave pivot points. Install a new release bearing into the fork and install the bearing and fork assembly back onto the transmission. Remove the spacer at the rear of the engine block. Unbolt and remove the old pressure plate and disc. Unbolt and remove the old flywheel. Before beginning the installation of your ACT clutch and flywheel, use some sort of non-petroleum based cleaner to clean off the friction surface areas of both your flywheel and pressure plate. Mount the flywheel using new flywheel attachment bolts included with your ACT flywheel. Torque the bolts to 44 foot-pounds in a star pattern, then mark the bolts and tighten an additional 90 degrees, also in a star pattern.
If you haven't done so already, make sure to clean the friction surface area with some sort of non-petroleum based cleaner. Set the disc in position and use the alignment tool to hold it in place. Before installing the pressure plate, if you have not already done so, make sure to clean the friction surface area with some sort of non-petroleum based cleaner. Now set the pressure plate in position and install the bolts. Tighten the bolts in a star pattern until snug and then torque them to 24 foot-pounds, also in a star pattern. Remove the alignment tool. Lift the transmission back into position and install the engine block spacer before joining the transmission to the back of the engine. Install all the bell housing bolts and tighten them to the specified torque values shown in the graphic. You can now tighten any of the various lines and brackets that were previously loosened to allow better access to the lower bell housing bolts. Tighten the engine mounts and torque the hardware to 17 foot-pounds. Place the sway bar back into position and tighten the hardware. Install the transmission selector lever and tighten the nut to 17 foot-pounds. On the upper right side of the transmission, install the connecting rod for the selector lever and tighten the bolt to 17 foot-pounds. Install the transmission push rod and tighten the hardware to 29 foot-pounds. On the upper left of the transmission, install the crankshaft position sensor and its heat shield. Tighten the bolt and reconnect the electrical plug. On the upper left side of the transmission, install the slave cylinder back into position and tighten the bolt to 17 foot-pounds. On the upper right of the transmission, reinstall the oxygen sensor harness and plugs back into the bracket. Lift the transmission up into position and install the crossmember bolts. Tighten the four smaller bolts to 47 foot-pounds and the two larger bolts to 81 foot-pounds and add an additional 90 degrees.
Install the driver's side axle heat shield. Install the driver's side axle to the transmission flange and tighten the hardware to 59 foot-pounds. Install the passenger side axle heat shield. Install the passenger side axle to the transmission flange and tighten the hardware to 59 foot-pounds. Install the rear and center tunnel heat shields. Place the drive shaft up into position making sure to align the marks made during disassembly. Install the hardware at the rear hand tight. Install the hardware at the front and tighten them to 40 foot-pounds. Now tighten the hardware at the rear to 40 foot-pounds. Place the heat shield into position over the drive shaft's center bearing and tighten the center bearing bolts to 18 foot-pounds. At the rear of the transmission, install the heat shield for the drive shaft. On both the passenger and driver's side, install the exhaust brackets to the transmission. Place the exhaust back into position and install the hangers into the rubber isolators. Install and tighten the hardware for both passenger and driver side front flanges. Connect both passenger and driver's side exhaust brackets to the exhaust and tighten the hardware. Reconnect the oxygen sensors and secure the wiring away from the exhaust. Install the tunnel brace and tighten the hardware.
Place the splash guard bracket into position, tighten the hardware, and then install the splash guard. Reconnect the negative battery cable and tighten the nut. For more information on our products or the parts featured in this video, please visit our website in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please support us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching.